Hey guys, it's Natalia. Um, this is my first European history video, so I hope you like it. And if you have any suggestions, remember to comment down there or on my Twitter page, which I'll post a link to down there in the doobly doo. Okay, so the Great Schism, aka the Babylonian, the Second Babylonian Captivity, uh, started in 1305 with King Philip of France. And up until this point, Italy had all control of the papacy, and um, they had all the popes in Italy, and they got all the money from church taxes, and so they were all powerful. But France wasn't doing so good, and they wanted that power. So what they did was they elected Pope Clement, um, and he moved the papacy to Avion, France. and. It was controlled by the French monarchy until 1378. Um, and then Pope Gregory XII moved the papacy back to Italy. And then after that, the council had to elect a pope because his reign didn't last long, only a couple of years. Um, and so the council, which was made up of both French, Italian, and Spanish, and a couple other nationalities elected someone, but they were kind of afraid of the Italian mob because they didn't want any problems over there. So they were like, okay, we'll just elect Pope Urban the Sixth, and he's going to be good. And in fact, he did want um, everything to be all right. He, wa he wanted the church to be reformed and for everything to be smoothed out and fine. But France was like, no, no, you can't do that. Because what you just did there was you uh, got pretty much bribed by the Italian mob. So we're not going to let you do that. We're going to elect another pope. And you have to suffer with that. And Italy was like, no, we're going to keep this pope. And so what they did was they split up the church into two. And they kept saying stuff like, Oh, he is the anti-pope, and if you follow him, you're going to um, be siding with the devil. Because that's what they are. They're the devil. And all of France and its followers, and all of Italy's enemies, sided with the French pope. And all of France's enemies, and all the Italian followers and allies, sided with the Italian pope, including England, who was fighting with France for a while, um, the people at this time were really lost. Like, John Wycliffe, um, wrote, um, that the church had no foundation in having power according to the scriptures, and that all these people wanted was power and money, which was kind of true. But he had his own set of followers called the Lollards. And in 1409, the Lollards, along with a bunch of other people from the church, came and formed the Council of Pisa. And they were like, um, we're going to elect another, another pope, and we hope that this will solve it. But it didn't. They elected Alexander the V. And I should add that this council was made up at, of councilorists, and they believed that the church um, should be ruled by the council. So now, um, Europe had three popes, and nobody knew who to follow because everyone was disagreeing with each other and trash-talking the other two, and it was all just a big mess. And this lasted for eight years until 1417, when the Council of Constance met. And these people had three objectives. One, to end the schism. Two, to reform the church. And three, to eliminate hearsay. Um, they elected Gregory the Twelfth, and that's when the schism ended. And they just ended up back at square one with less followers and a lot of doubt and confusion within the church. So pretty much this whole thing happened for no reason except to cause doubt and confusion. Um, but it did end up um, starting the Protestant Re Reformation um, to come in later years, and it 
another episode of this. I hope you liked it, and I hope you learned something. Um, stay tuned for more videos, and if you have any questions or comments, please comment down there or on my Twitter page, and I will see you sometime later.